Hey, Ronnie. Hello. Hey, uh, I I don't know. I'll break this to you, but I next weekend for Men Are So Smart, mm -hmm. I, I I'm I'm not gonna be able to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I got a um, thing. You know what? I'm not I've, buying. I'm I've not buying thing. it. No, there's a, a thing with the thing that's going on. No. And my wife it, and and she said that if I didn't do this, then I was gonna. I just I'm not gonna. Yeah. I got this thing. That's not happening. That's. How do you know I'm lying? You are. Well. Because your lips are moving. <laughs> <laughs> Am I that bad an actor? <laughs> On this episode, how to tell when someone is lying to you. That's next. Hi there, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Welcome to our show. It's called Men Are So Smart. We're glad that you are here. Yep. We talk about all kinds of stuff, things that make your life better, uh, how to make a good decision. Um, we, we've got all kinds of different topics that are not only timely, but topical <laughs> and redundant. But <laughs> on today's show, we have reasons and ways you can tell someone's lying. We hear anywhere between 10 to 200 lies a day. Wow. See, there you go. I lied right there. <laughs> With all that lying going on, how can we decipher what's true and what isn't? Here are 10 telltale 10, 10, 10 signs that someone is lying to you. Number 10. Uh, number 10. Oh, the shifty eyes. Yeah, that's a dead giveaway. Uh, as the saying goes, the eyes are the windows to the soul. With that said, you can study them to spot a liar. Oh, tell me more. Telltale signs include rapid blinking, darting eyes, and looking in the wrong direction. I think I'm dizzy. Okay, so let's explain that a little bit. All right. Uh, according to an FBI agent uh -huh. and author of the book, How to Spot Lies Like the FBI. I want to know. That should, also, that should be a song because it's a very, a very catchy tune. Uh, we blink more when we're lying. Our eyes will also dart back and forth. It's a physiological reaction to feelings of discomfort when we're asked questions we don't want to answer. It's a throwback to when people had to seek an escape route when they feared they were in a dangerous situation, such as facing a human or animal adversary, he told Business Insider. Huh. Uh, the direction in which a person looks can also reveal whether or not they're telling the truth. Uh, if you ask a right-handed person to recall something they saw and they look up to the left, they're accessing their memory, uh, which means they're telling the truth. If, however, they look up to the right, they're accessing their imagination. Ooh. Okay, which means they're lying. Uh, if they're telling the truth, they'll look toward their left ear when recalling a specific sound, and they'll look down and to the left to recall a specific smell or sensation. Left-handed individuals will have the opposite reaction. Now, that's not... We, I actually went to a class. Tell me. An all day, a 10 hour class on this very subject. It's not true in 100% of the people. If you're right handed, you don't always look up to the left when you're telling the truth. And what they typically do is they ask you a setup question to say, hey, think back to the first house you ever lived in. And when you reach the front door, was the doorknob on the left or was it on the right? Okay, mine was on the right. Okay, and your eyes went up and to the left. Did and, they? Yes. You saw it? Yes. So, so as you're recalling that, they're going up to the left. Now, what happens when people... So what happens is, which is something that people commonly say when they're about <laughs> to lie to you, because they're giving themselves a little break to think of something. Uh -huh. Their eyes will go up here as they make up something. And then over here, because they'll mix it in with a tiny bit of the truth. Wow. And then back here as they make something up and back over here. So the eyes go back and forth. Is that a darting or not? It is darting, okay, right. yes. And so you will you will notice that as the eyes darting back and forth. I'm self-conscious now. I'm, I'm afraid to look away. <laughs> and you can't, there's no way you can control it. I, one other thing that I'll, and it's not said in here, and so I'll, I don't think it is. I, I think, think I read ahead, but... One thing that some, you'll ask somebody something like, did you have anything to do with this car being stolen? And they'll say, 
No, I did not. Huh. They'll shake their head. They'll nod when they want to do this. They can only lie so much. Like, I had nothing to do with that. Or it's even easier. People shake, shake their head this way. Uh -huh. So if you'll ask them something that should be a yes, but they go yes, uh, classic example. Wow. Physiologically, it's very hard to control. Wow. And who teaches a class like that? Like a psychologist? We or? have we have a deputy who he actually travels all over the world and teaches this class. Um, he he retired and he makes it on his own just by let me see who wrote this. No, he's he did he's not the one that wrote it. But he does. He teaches a class to law enforcement, really anybody that wants to pay to go to a seminar on how to tell them people are lying. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'd find that extremely interesting. It is very interesting. Ways to tell someone's lying to you, anxiety. When a person is lying, they may exhibit nervous behavior, like grooming themselves or whatever is nearby. For example, they might adjust their glasses or necktie, straighten their skirt, move their hair behind their ear, or wipe sweat from their forehead when responding to a question. They might even tidy up their surroundings. Touching the face is another sign. Touching the face has a calming effect when the brain is under stress. A trained behavioral analysis interviewer interrogator told NBC News, you should also take notice of fidgety hands and feet. Um... Other cues include lip licking or biting, ear pulling, rapid breathing, and swallowing or clearing the throat before answering a question. Hmm. And, and I think um, that's alluded to what Ron was saying about saying something to stall for time. Right. So you're clearing your throat. <clears> throat> I'm preparing <clears throat> to tell you <clears throat> a lie. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, and this is one of the other ones... Uh, uh, right to, it goes right along with so what happens is uh -huh. uh, is well I'm going to be honest with you yeah yeah <laughs> when you hear somebody say that they're not going to be honest at all no. I'll be honest uh, so all the other times you weren't <laughs> right that's exactly what happened okay all right this next one uh -huh. inconsistency yeah so this one has a little caveat that uh -huh. I, I'm aware of uh, this is one of the most obvious if a person is lying they're going to uh, contradict themselves. However, the author, author of the book Lie Spotting, Pamela Myers, warns that this is the least reliable sign that someone is lying. Uh, there could be other reasons why their story changed, she told Inc. Magazine. In fact, most truthful people, when they're asked to retell the story several times, will remember additional details each time which means the stories they tell will change slightly. It's kind of like interviewing a crook, huh? It kind of, it could be, yes, yeah. very similar to that. Uh, one theory for the change is that when you, you think you remember a past event, you're actually remembering the last time you remembered it. Okay, I think I wrapped so, my head that. So, you know, if you've told the story before, you're trying to remember how you told the story before. Uh-huh. The biggest thing with this inconsistency and where people get in trouble is they can't remember the lie they told. And so it's, and I, boy, when I interviewed people, I'd always tell them, hey, it's so much easier to be truthful. You don't have to remember anything. Right. You just tell exactly the way it was. Uh, in the class that we took, it was, what was my last lie? What will my next lie be? And will I remember my last lie? So hmm. uh, there are a lot of things to remember if you're telling a lie. Which brings us to our next, which is forgetfulness. Yeah. This one is similar to being inconsistent, but rather than contradicting themselves, the person simply can't remember the story, or at least parts of it anyway. Here's a neat little trick to try if you think somebody's lying to you. Ask them to tell you the story oh. backward rather than forward in time. For truthful people, this makes recall easier. Liars often simplify the story to avoid contradicting themselves, says an FBI agent. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a, that would be a dead giveaway. Uh, next up, a fake smile and a dry mouth. 
Oh boy. Uh, if someone flashes a fake smile, it's highly likely they're being deceptive. Um, how to spot, and this is from a book, uh, author of a book, How to Spot Frenemies, Undermimers, and Ruthless People. But it's not just the mouth that you have to watch, it's their whole expression. A truthful person smiles with their entire face. Excuse me, like the famous Mona Lisa, crow's feet indicate honesty. Dry mouth is another indicator of dishonesty. A person's mouth will often go dry as she's lying. It's funny that they say she here. Yeah, why? <laughs> Sexist. She may do a sucking motion, pur pursing her lips to try to overcome this. Wow, this is going on. This is changing directions yeah, quickly. Yeah, it did, huh? Uh, people will often hide their mouth when they're being untruthful. If someone puts their hand in front of their mouth while responding to your question, it's quite, quite possible they're not telling you the truth. Mm. Next up is avoidance. Oh. If someone suddenly doesn't want to talk about something or quickly tries to change the subject, they could be lying. For example, uh, when Representative Anthony Weiner, <laughs> I said Weiner, speaks for um, himself, they could be lying. Um, let's see. He denied sending lewd photos of himself to a female college student on Twitter. He switched topics and began talking about voting on the debt limit. At one point, he even used a limiting statement when he replied to one of the queries, I think I've been pretty responsive to you in the past, limiting his answer with, I think, and pretty, the article also said. Uh, this next one, I actually hit on it unintentionally uh, a couple of seconds ago. It's head nodding. So don't just pay attention to whether or not they're nodding their head, but pay attention to the direction in which they're nodding. When people are telling the truth, their head movement usually matches what they're saying. For example, if they nod, nod side to side, saying no, or nod up and down while saying yes, they're likely telling the truth. If, however, their nod disagrees with what they're saying, uh, in other words, nodding side to side when you mean yes, and up and down when you mean no, they're most likely lying. Uh, or not listening. <laughs> right. Maybe not even listening to themselves. Yeah. Uh, which proves I was listening to you. <laughs> uh, it's important to keep in mind that in some cultures, nodding up and down doesn't mean yes. Uh, uh -huh. And nodding side to side doesn't necessarily mean no. And that's uh, from a former CIA officer in a parade article. Wow, what uh, that seems so natural. I can't even imagine my body thinking that this means yes. No, me neither. Yeah. Uh, as you heard me in the open, unnecessary wordiness. <laughs> Giving too many details. Yeah. It's kind of a bad sign. Excessive use of superlatives can be a dead giveaway that someone is twisting the truth. People who insist on peppering their speech with them might be trying to bolster their argument or distract you. By superlatives, we mean words that indicate the highest degree of something. These words are adjectives or adverbs and often end in EST or LY, for instance, nicest, absolutely, literally, literally. I hate literally. <laughs> you know, these, these kids today, they use that completely wrong. I've heard it literally a million times. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Most interesting, tremendous, best, worst, simplest. Hold up, wait a minute. What if you're communicating with them on the phone? How can you tell if they're lying? We're glad you asked. Keep reading. Yep. Uh, some people would prevent a or present a different phone persona. Okay. All right. Uh, people are often creatures of habit. If they change up even in a text message, it could be that in the text they're hiding something. Uh, here's an example. You have a girlfriend, which my wife does not approve of, who usually texts back very fast. You send her a text asking her to be honest about where she went the other night. But instead of the usual fast response, she takes forever to get back to you. Ooh, big, uh, big uh, stop sign right there. Yeah. Another way to tell she's not being honest with you is if she responds in the tone of a voice that's different from hers. For example, she uses fewer words or emojis than she normally does. Also beware if she's being extra nice or uses a ton of exclamation points. Lastly, if you see speech bubbles appear and disappear, you know she's thinking about texting. Uh, she's doing a lot of typing and then erasing. Mm -hmm. Could be that she's trying to craft the perfect response, the way to get out that perfect lie without being 
discovered. <laughs> okay, and finally, that brings us to number one, hesitation. <clears throat> the same lie detecting methods you use when speaking to someone face to face can be applied when conversing with them on the telephone. For instance, if they take a long time to answer your question, use words like um or well before answering you, or if they avoid answering a direct question yes or no, they could be lying. Something else to listen for is a lot of <clears throat> throat clearing. As we mentioned before, it's a sign of anxiety. According to Psychology Today, liars sometimes clear their throats in a fight or flight response to the stress of maintaining a lie. The moisture usually present in the throat has been rerouted to the skin. Ooh. So in conclusion, the next time you suspect someone is being untruthful, just follow the tips on the list. Yeah, wow. You won't go wrong. We I'll learned you, a lot. So one more mm -hmm. that I see an awful lot is when you're asking, when you get down to the nitty gritty and you're asking the really hard questions mm -hmm. and people do this, that's a block off. Yeah, I've heard that. That is a, they're not receptive to your question and they're blocking it out. And so when they, as soon as they do this, you're about to hear a lie. Wow. Yep. Well, one of the things I want to stress after doing this episode is that this show, Men Are So Smart, is nothing if not honest. Right. <laughs> we try to be honest with you in everything that we say and do. We bring you little tidbits of our own personal lives and relationships and work environments and things that we've learned, and, and we'll continue doing that. Uh, we appreciate your watching our show. We have somewhere over 400 episodes and we would love to have you go back into the library and check out, in fact, the first two or three shows. The first one is uh, the Lou Gallagher story. Right. And the second one, oh, I, I think. Oh, I crossed my arm. Whoops, oh boy. The, uh, and I just touched my nose, <laughs> uh, is uh, I Fought the Law. Right, uh, yes. The Corvette Ronnie story. Yep. So that's going back to episodes like one and two, and we're yep. at 400 now. You can see how the show has evolved, and we hope that you've enjoyed watching it. We will continue to can bring you the show. Uh, please give the show a like. Yeah. Are you touching your ear? <laughs> Inadvertently. Okay. Please give the show a like, a thumbs up, and if you would, subscribe to our channel. Click the bell so that you get notifications each time a new show comes out. I am Lou Gallagher. I am Corvette Roddy. And we'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Looks forward to it. Yep.